I'm Dorothy Buchanan Wilson, International President, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Welcome to Conversations. La, la. Welcome to this episode of Conversations, where we have as our special guest, Sora Carlene Roy, who is known inside Alpha Kappa Alpha as our fixer, or our Olivia Pope. She is president of the Vanity Group, and she is one that works with jet setters, rock stars, and other celebrities who have an insatiable appetite for luxury. Sir, Carlene, welcome to Conversations. Thank you for having me, Madam Supreme. It's my honor. Thank you for being here. Here in Alpha Kappa Alpha, we are an organization that's about legacy. And one of the things that I found out about you is that not only are you the daughter of a soror, but that you also have a sister who's also a member of our great sisterhood. Talk a little bit about what it means to have that as a part of your lineage, and more importantly, what it meant to you to come in as a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha in Alpha Chapter. Um, since I could walk or even crawl, um, being a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority was all, always a priority for everyone in my family. My mother was very involved in her chapter, Miss Fashionetta. Um, she pinned every young woman on my block. So as a kid, I was going to pin and ceremony, step practice, community service. So that's all I ever known. Um, I really had no other option. Like, you're going to be an AK and it's a done deal. Of course, who am I to argue with, you know, my mother? So. Um, it was a dream come true for me um, to have my mother be a soror, my sister, and I also come from a long lineage of sorors just throughout my family um, in general. So, you know, it's no other way to go, and what an honor to come through where our amazing sorority was founded at Howard University Alpha Chapter. So um, it just always has been a blessing. It's a real honor that I am here today. I don't get excited much, but even like pulling up, I almost had like a mini panic attack, like, wow, it's real. I am at the Alpha Kappa Alpha headquarters that you opened up the Ivy Leaf and you see as a little kid. And to be here walking through the doors is absolutely a dream come true for me. I want to talk a little bit about what you have created, which is certainly breakthrough. And you have created one of the leading boutique luxury lifestyle management companies. For those of us who are not quite sure what that is, mm -hmm. could you please um, make us more aware of what it is you do and how you do it, quite absolutely. honestly. Absolutely. Um, the Vanny Group is my baby. We are a very unique and small agency where we fulfill the crazy, wild, over-the-top, out-of-this-world request of celebrities, high-profile people, well-known individuals. And it's the Vanity Group? The Vanity Group. Very good. And what's the origin of that name? The origin of the name is when you look in the mirror, um, people think vanity, that means that it's something, you know, it's bad or it's not good to be vain, but vain is having... Um, the most extreme amount of confidence that you can have. And if you don't think you're hot when you look in the mirror, who else will? So our tagline is actually where being self-centered is a good thing. Where else can you go where it's all about you for once? And at the Vanier Group, we are all about our clients. Right. Now, and you talk about courage, and you also talked a little bit about um, high profile. You've had the opportunity to work for one of the most high profile individuals of our time, um, Sean P. Diddy Combs. Could you talk a little bit about your experience with Mr. Combs? Absolutely. Um, after graduating from Howard University, I had this wild dream to move to New York City, and I started my career there in the music industry. I had worked at um, Island Def Jam Records. I had a post at Sony Music, and I got the opportunity to work with Neo. So while I was working at all these different posts, I was, you know, being connected to the right people who kind of championed me and pushed me along my way in the business. And an opportunity came about to interview to be Mr. Combs' senior executive assistant, which would have been a dream come true for me. So I always say that job or that call was the quintessential example of opportunity meeting preparation. And I got the job and my life has completely changed. Right. And you've had a fascinating life. You, know, you spoke of your Midwestern roots, and then you went to Howard University, where you were initiated into Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority through the Alpha chapter. Yes, indeed. And then you moved from there to New York, and now you're on your own. How did you make that big leap of faith? Um, the leap of faith, I always say that business owners and entrepreneurs, you have to be dreamer. It has to be a dreamer. And all my life, I've been a dreamer. You have to dream big. And 
simultaneously you have to be a doer. So, you know, um, working at Bad Boy alongside Mr. Combs, I got firsthand knowledge to see and have it modeled in front of me what an entrepreneur is, what it is to be fearless, what it is to have tenacity that is out of this world. So he was a great prime example for me to see what it is to be fearless and jump out the window and want to create your own. So I credit him for being my inspiration and my motivation to give me the courage to, hey, I do want to start my business and I am going to figure it out on my own. So I'm just very thankful that he gave me the wings I needed to fly and, you know, be successful and I can do it on my own. Right. And one of the things you mentioned before we started this conversation was the fact that you tend to be someone who has resilience and you put the time in, in terms of put the work in to opportunities. I know you were with Mr. Combs for over six years. So Absolutely. talk a little bit about the fact that, you know, it's not an overnight sensation that you really did have to work hard. Absolutely. I definitely worked hard. There definitely was, you know, sleepless nights and they weren't all in vain, you know, no pun intended. Um, I think today, especially with the younger generation of people with social media and everything that's going on in the world, um, there's a sense of instant gratification. And I'm the exact opposite of that. I'm no stranger to hard work. Um, I'm very humble. I don't mind, you know, rolling up my sleeves and getting down and dirty and putting in the work. And, you know, hard work pays off. And I am, you know, absolutely uh, an example of that. Just staying, like, steadfast and doing what you're supposed to be doing and, you know, not getting discouraged when things don't go your way. I always say that you need a testimony um, that something's going to, like, push you forward and, you know, make your story a little bit richer. Now, you have a number of high-profile clients, and you work in a business, as, as indicated earlier, a lot of jet setters and celebrities. Talk a little about how do you balance in that world. Um, I have a great um, network who is around me in a very small, intimate group. Um, my mother has no problem calling me on the phone and, you know, knocking me back down where I need to be. I have great friends and mentors who, you know, keep me grounded. I'm highly spiritual, so, you know, I'd have no problem, like, being out with my clients, but you're also going to find me at church Tuesday evening, you know, at Bible study. So I live a very colorful life, um, but also blessed to have people who, you know, keep me grounded and, you know, keep me sane. And when I think I'm, like, out in outer space, they always say, like, come back down to earth, so... That is my saving grace. Right. And what does it mean to you to live fearlessly? To live fearlessly to me means to do what you want to do. And there's a little something inside of you, your gut. You know, follow your gut. Anytime I've ever gone against my gut, it's always come back to like, you know, bite me in the butt for a lack of better words. So I think to be fearless, you need to be confident. You need to believe in yourself because if you don't believe in yourself, no one else will. Right. And what advice would you give to some of our younger members who, again, are looking to start their own businesses, uh, but more importantly, not quite sure how to, how to just make that happen? What, advice, what one single piece of advice would you give? Them? I would tell them to take their business seriously. If you treat your business like a side hustle or something you do on the side, so will everybody else. Um, you have to manage up a lot of times, and people will treat you as such. So that would be my... Um, word of advice for any young soror or person in general that wants to start their own business, believe in your product, stand by it, and once you do, everybody else will fall in line. Right. Well, thank you so much for thank joining you. us on Conversations. Thank you. It's been such a pleasure to be here. And we look forward to hearing more from you. And certainly, as you move forward, continue to not only keep your Midwestern roots and your values intact, but more importantly, remember Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. You are truly, truly a shining example of success for us. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us for this episode of Conversations, and please join us again.